in your recent discussion with Brian uh, Catanzaro from NVIDIA, future developments appear to be iterative. From a hardware perspective, is that actually a good time to purchase a high-end GPU? Oh, no. Or should we wait until more of these revolutionary features slow down? Well, this is quite interesting. I was quite... Um, Interested to see, actually, a lot of people picked up your DLSS roundtable, Alex, and specifically yeah. this this idea of DLSS ten having completely influenced graphics, uh, which was yeah. uh, a I mean, concept that's... that you threw out there, which seemed to turn into headlines. Yeah, that, but... I mean, well, that's the nth degree goal for it, and I think that was what Brian was saying. He said ten as like he just threw out a number. He wasn't actually saying yeah. it like that uh, to speak for him. That was the obvious intention there. I think. Whether or not is iterative or not in the next uh, future developments is hard to say because we had frame generation come out a year ago, right? Yeah. And that was pipelined for about five years. And mm -hmm. ray reconstruction was pipelined for about three years and came out this year. And it's going to be iterating a lot over time. That's why I said that in the video. I was like, we're looking at the first iteration of it. And I know just because the AI model, they're going to be just constantly doing changes to it. Um, but what else have they had in the pipeline that we haven't seen, or maybe we have seen in just small bits that is going to be coming out with the next batch of GPUs? I couldn't even guess at this point because I didn't expect re ray reconstruction. I didn't expect the Spanish Inquisition, you know, like I didn't like it was just like I didn't notice it. Um, <laughs> and frame generation, I didn't really notice as well, too, until it came upon us. I don't want to say buy something right now or buy something in the future because you'll you won't be left out in terms of features because I honestly just can't know that. But I think Nvidia is not sitting on their laurels, and I'm pretty sure that whatever we saw this year, whenever they launch RTX 5090 um, I'm pretty sure they're going to show off something new that we didn't expect then because they keep on pushing the software as well as the hardware with each of these launches, right, Rich? So like. I would expect them to actually show off something new then that we didn't expect now. Yeah, there were leaks this week about the uh, 5090 specs, 512-bit yeah. uh, memory interface, massive increase in SM count. It's going to be massively expensive as well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think maybe the thing to bear in mind with high-end GPU at the moment is um, it, it's got to be about pricing. I hate to say it. Um, obviously, you know, everything from 40, 70 Ti upwards shipped with, uh, you know, big pricing, well, everything shipped with big price increases. Right. Um, I think prices have got to stabilize that, you know, obviously we did see with the arrival of the 7800 XT that competition can actually drive down prices, uh, 40, 70, 40, 60 Ti, uh, they saw price reductions, right? Um, the question is how much performance do we need and the 4090 is is still like you know vastly underutilized in a lot of cases unless you've got a 4k 120 hertz screen so there's a lot of leeway there i'd suggest that you know that you don't really need the best of the best to constitute a high-end gaming experience 4070 ti actually does everything that the 4090 can do at 1440p so if you imagine i mean i actually ran the numbers on this a 4070 Ti at 1440p is astonishingly close, in most cases within 3% uh, one way or the other of a 4090 running at 4K. So, you know, in terms of what a high-end GPU experience is, it's defined a lot by whether you're going all out, whether you're using optimized settings, but also your resolution, right? right. I think the funny thing about uh, frame generation, Alex, is that it's, it's, you know, the effects aren't really scaling with resolution, really. Mm -hmm. Would you say that's the case? You know, DLSS, obviously, you know, the more uh, input pixels you put in, the better. But frame interpolation is basically, you know, it's whatever the, the beginning and end frames are, either end, that de determines the quality of the middle one. So it yeah. shouldn't really... I was finding out pretty easily. I mean, there should be probably little things that are a little bit different if you were to do. I didn't do it immediately like a 4K versus a 720p and seeing like how much better it was. It probably is obviously a little better because the the um, the amount of pixels it's working off of, it can maybe identify features better. But one thing I did point out in my original DLSS 3 video, not the original one, but the one that was the review, mm -hmm. uh, is that the, um, the input 
the input, sorry, the input um, frame rate was the one that could actually determine image quality of the output frame rate. If you recall that, mm. I showed an instance in uh, Cyberpunk 2077 where it was like ultra performance mode DLSS at 4K looked better at a real native 120 hertz in terms of the aliasing than it did on uh with the lss3 so i'd say that is definitely the case we're not we're seeing it much more it's much more important what your base frame rate is than what your resolution is that's what i would okay. call it, term it yeah